Hello, welcome to part 7 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Let's move to our 31st question. A patient is receiving physical therapy intervention for rheumatoid arthritis, which is in remission. Which of the following interventions is most appropriate for this patient? Option A. Contract relax stretching for tight stretcher. Option B. End range mobilization techniques. Option C. Elimination of the functional activities of involved parts. Option D. Strengthening exercise for weak muscles. And the answer is... Option D. Strengthening exercise for weak muscles. Explanation to this question is... Contract relax stretching for tight stretcher is not recommended for soft tissue compromised by rheumatoid arthritis. Grade 4 mobilization techniques are contraindicated for soft tissue compromised by rheumatoid arthritis. The elimination of functional activity is not required. Strengthening exercises are most appropriate intervention for a patient with rheumatoid arthritis in remission. Now move to our 32nd question. A patient is referred to physical therapy secondary to pain in the right elbow. The physician notes upon X-ray that appears there is a tear in the annular ligament. Which of the following would you excite as a result of tear in the annular ligament? Option A. Ulnar nerve entrapment. Option B. Valgus stress on the lateral collateral ligament. Option C. Dislocation of the head of the radius. Option D. A tear in the biceps muscle. And the answer is... Option C. Dislocation of the head of the radius. Explanation to this question is, the annular ligament encircles the head of the radius and holds it in a radial notch of the ulna. Distal of the notch, the annular ligament forms a complete fibrous ring. Therefore, if the annular ligament was turned, the head of the radius would dislocate. Moving to our 33rd question. A 21-year-old patient present to physical therapy with a diagnosis of medial meniscus tear of the right knee. Which of the following signs and symptoms most strongly supports this diagnosis? Option A. Mechanical loading. Option B. Decreased pain with weight bearing. Option C. Posterior knee swelling. Option D. Atrophy of hamstring. And the answer is... Option C. Posterior knee swelling. Explanation to this question is, a history of mechanical loading is a common symptom of the knee medial meniscus tear. Pain is commonly increased with weight bearing, not decreased weight bearing. Swelling would be more likely to be evident anteriorly, not posteriorly. Cordyceps atrophy is more likely, not a hamstring atrophy. Now let's move to our 34th question. A 23-year-old female is referred to physical therapy with a diagnosis of lesion in the upper trapezius. The physician has referred the patient for evaluation and treatment as appropriate. As a physical therapist, which result would you expect to see if the individual had a lesion in the upper trapezius? Option A. Shoulder abduction would be weak. Option B. There would be no rotation of the upper scapula. Option C. Scapular retraction would be weak. Option D. The scapula would be rotated downward, which may result in subluxation of the sternoclavicular joint. And the answer is Option D. The scapula would be rotated downward, which may result in the subluxation of the sternoclavicular joint. Explanation to this question is if an individual has a lesion of the upper trapezius, it would be reasonable to expect the scapula to be rotated downward. If scapula was rotated downward, this could cause the subluxation of the sternoclavicular joint, which is double gliding joint between the sternum and the clavicle. Now move to our 35th question. You are performing light touch to discriminate the sensory level of the spinal cord injury patient. When you move the brush along the patient's chest in vertical manner, the patient states that he does not feel any stimulus as the brush reaches the level of umbilicus. Which of the following would be the best estimate of the level of lesion for this patient? Option A, T2, Option B, T4, Option C, T10, Option D, T12. And the answer is... Option C, T10. Explanation to this question is, T10 corresponds with the impaired sensation of the dermatome pattern at the level of the umbilicus. 
T2 axillary region and T4 at nipple region and T12 at anterior superior iliac spine level. So that's all for today. If you need further clarification, check the description box and give your feedback in the comment box. If you like this MCQ session, do subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thank you.